quick little vid of the contents of a Strider conversion kit. Hub motor assembly, it'll come with the caliper and everything attached. Battery, spare brake pads, charging port, little extra longer screws, get a new throttle, some zip ties, got a battery holder, controller, throttle wiring harness, have a frame spreader tool, and a new charger. D wheel will come assembled like this. That way you don't have to figure out which washer goes where, just simply look at the picture. Step one is strip the contents out of the center of the frame. If you have good parts, by all means save them because you can sell them and make your money back. Step two, we need to open this area up. Most Stasic bikes are anywhere between 114 and 117 millimeters. We must bring it to 122 to 125 millimeters. 125 is going to be 4 and 7 eighths. So if you can get to 4 and 3 quarters or 4 and 7 eighths, you are golden. Okay? And this is how much we have to spread the frame. We have a spreading tool here that we will use to spread the frame. So the spreader tool will look like this. You will have two washers on the inside. Make sure you use the washers. If you don't, the nuts start grinding the uh, frame and it gets really difficult so make sure you put the washers on the inside like such okay make sure you got the washers and here we go Make sure you keep the pressure on here. This side has to stay in. This one not so much. Okay, you can see we're starting to get towards the end of the the bolt here. And the frames, the frames, you know, getting pushed at an angle. But we do need to bring the frame all the way to the outside of these bolts okay so you see here that I'm in just a little bit well, I'm pretty flush and that's as much as you want to spread that frame Okay, now that we have spread the frame all the way, loosen up your tool and remove it. Remember, you got two washers on there, so go ahead and remove the washers. There are marks on the spreader tool. See the marks on the spreader tool? Unscrew the nuts till you get to that mark. If you had a, a set of calipers, somewhere around 121, 122 millimeters. If you have a tape measure, it's right there at four and three quarters, four, seven eighths, somewhere around there, and you are golden. Double check. 
so I'm okay. That tells me that my wheel is going to fit in there nicely. The battery will slide in from the back like such. It will slide at an angle. You cannot put the battery in straight. It will not work. You must come at an angle. You have the top of the wires right here that need to go in. Sometimes, sometimes it's gonna get caught right on the bottom here. Don't worry. There's some tape around here. Just do a little tap and the battery slides right in. Once you install the battery, you're going to find your brake bracket kit. I have one prepared already. For the 24 volt, you will use the pad that comes with it for the 36. You will not have to use the pad. Sometimes right here on your frame, right here inside on the frame, you might have some sort of um, thick weld spot where they welded it too much. And you might have to uh, shave that down a little bit. If you have a burr or a burr tool, fantastic. A rat tail file will work. Flat files, eh, you might be able to get a flat file in there. Not very good. Um, but you might have to shave that down just a little bit for this to go forward correctly and all the way. This is a plastic housing and this is a plastic cap. So, um, if you have to spank that a little bit, don't be shy. It's not going to hurt the battery. Inside the battery there is protection and you're not going to hurt anything. So, align that hole up. Don't cross thread them and don't tighten this one first. Make sure you put both screws in. Okay, and make sure you don't cross thread. All right, you can, the bracket can go up and push, that's fine. That is step three, battery installation. You will get a throttle that looks like this. There will be no grip on this throttle. The first reason is this tube is nice and small and the kids can grab this tube. If you choose to put a, a grip on, any motorcycle grip will fit over this tube. For the small little ones, choice is yours. Grip and wiring harness. First thing we're going to do is install the wiring harness into the tube. This end will go in first. two connectors. Do the green connector first. Turn it sideways. This tab will not go in. If you turn it this way, you have to turn it sideways. This is the brake cable that we feed through. So it'll go on the top of the brake cable, not behind the brake cable. Put it on the top of the brake cable like such. and fish it down in there. It'll come out the other end. This current wire is long. You will receive a shorter wire. 
This is for one of our other frames. We made the correct wire that's gonna be about this long. So don't worry about this big long wire right now. Once I have fished the throttle wire through, I'm going to install my throttle. Tools will be provided in the kit so you can put the throttle on there. Okay, and that's it. Connect the throttle if you choose to. At this point, there is an arrow and the arrow, line the arrows up and push in. Okay, step five, we'll be installing the rear wheel assembly. All wheels will come like this with all the components installed already. Your brake caliper and all the bolts will be tight. You need to loosen up the nuts. It's best that you remove the kickstand right now. That just makes it easier to deal with. You want to loosen up the caliper bolts. And make sure everything's flopping around. On the caliper side, pull the caliper out and leave yourself some space here. The thin washer will go to the inside. And the caliper bracket will get pulled to the outside. 10 millimeter space or so is fantastic. Same thing with the other side. Thin washer to the inside, alignment washer to the outside. Gonna flip it upside down, the caliper goes on the right side, make sure that washer stays in. And here comes the fun part, putting the wheel inside the frame. When you insert the hub motor onto the frame, you want to do the caliper side first. Make sure your washer is on the inside and slide it in there like such. Be aware that the axle nut has two flat sides. Those two flat sides are going to slide in the slot. Be careful Be careful when you slide in the slot that the axle is flat. If you're at an angle, it's not going to go in very easily. So be aware that when I hold the axle, I need to, I need to be in alignment with that hole. Sometimes it's going to want to rotate on you. See the see I'm pulling on that and it just rotates around Okay, so that's why I'm kind of holding this wire So I'm going to go in on the Caliper side first Give myself a little more room there Okay, and then you want to rotate that. Someone can help you if you're by yourself. 
make sure this washer is on the inside. You're going to use these three fingers and pull the frame and the thumb is going to push. And sometimes that washer don't want to cooperate. Okay, and then it's going to slide right in. Yep, this side popped out. So, oh, it went right in. All right. Be very careful when you put the caliper side on that this bracket and this alignment tab right here goes into the slot. If it's on the outside of the slot and you start to tighten like this, you're flattening out that tab and then it's not going to lock in the slot properly. So make sure, make sure that that tab sits down in there just like that and then you can push it forward and then it goes into the slot just like that. The other side has another alignment tab. Make sure your rear wheel is aligned. Okay, that would be crooked. So I'm just simply pushing over here with my thumb. I'm looking at this line and I'm in the center. All right, I installed the rear wheel. That was fairly simple. This side is my kickstand side. I'm gonna put my kickstand back on. Don't move it. Come on, baby. Okay, install your kickstand like such. I'm here at a probably 40 drive, okay? So there's 90 and I'm sitting at a 45. I'm going to tighten and push down on the kickstand. It's gonna wanna rotate up, but I'm still pushing down. Okay. Now I'm getting to the point where it's really tight. And then I rotate it into position. Okay. And the rear wheel is installed. Flip the bike over and now we're going to do brake adjustment. Okay, brake adjustment is, is quite simple. You want to rotate the uh, wheel so you have a hole right here. On the back of the caliper, there is a bolt or a set screw. Let me find a caliper real quick. So you're going to have a little set screw on the caliper, okay? That's where it's located. Come in from the rear, you're going to unscrew the caliper. You're going to unscrew the caliper till it stops. You're going to go and close it half and just a little bit past half. Then you're going to close the calipers. Oh, my bad. I missed one step. Okay, I missed one step. So you're supposed to do this before you adjust the caliper. You have to slide the caliper all the way forward and tighten it up. Make sure it's good and tight. Give the wheel a spin. Make sure nothing's rubbing. Go back and do your adjustment, which I already did. I'm going to close the caliper. P 
pinch it tight against the disc. I'm going to put this screw snug. I'm going to snug up this one. Then I'm going to snug up this one. Okay. Still holding pressure. And then I'm going to make them tight. I'm going to come to the back of the caliper again and I'm going to unscrew it all the way again. Then I'm going to check and see if I have any rubbing, which I don't. I have good lever actuation, so it's not going super far. If you look down inside there, you'll see that I have some air gap between the two, which is what I want. Install your cable, your cable routing. Your cable routing is gonna now come to the inside like this and on the top. So it's gonna come just like that. Loosen this up. Put the cable in like such. You'll pull on the cable. Make sure. Make sure the cable is inside on top. This one is not. So I got to make sure it goes in properly. Pull on the cable a little bit. Close all the way back up just a tiny bit and tighten the cable spin it it rubs open it up loosen the lever just a tiny bit tighten it up again spin it double check that you're getting good travel should come to about right there, maybe even a little closer, depend on, depending on where your child's uh, uh, fingers are. This particular lever, ha lever has an adjustment, so you can do whatever adjustment you like right there. And then we have the brakes adjusted. Spin again, make sure no rubbing. And you are done. Okay, step six and a half. Six and a half, we're gonna have to prep these covers. This particular cover is on a brushless cover, or excuse me, on a brush. This is a brushed motor cover. Uh, the brushless motor cover, I am not familiar with, but my friend tells me that there are some vents here that should not be in the way. There are tabs on the covers that we need to break off in order for the controller to fit in there properly. The controller is going to fit in this area like this. So we have to break those tabs off on either side. Those tabs, they look like this. They're thin. I have broken these off already, but all you got to do is just take a, a channel locks, uh, uh, you can take wire cutters, snub nose pliers, anything, and basically snap those tabs off. There's a tab right here, I'll just basically bend right off, oops, sorry. There's a tab right here, just bend it right off. Okay, so that's what you'll do with all those. In the center here, there is a stub out like this for the screw. You're going to cut that off. On the other side, 
there is another stub out like such. Cut that off. Over here, there's the tube guide. You're going to cut that about halfway down, three quarters, okay? Parasite cutters, uh, anything really works. <laughs> if you don't have side cutters, you can use pliers. Now we have experimented with some holes here where to put the charging port. The charging port is your choice. So is the speed switch. And we'll get to that in just a second. The hole where you cut off this screw tower is a good place to put the charging port if you choose to. So once you finish cutting all the tabs off and you got your screw towers taken away, we are ready to install the controller. Step seven. Step seven is the controller installation. Controller position will slide right in there just like that. When you're finished it will be in the middle of these two screw towers floating in there just like that. You can keep the bike upright if you want to, or lay the bike down. I lay the bike down because I want to do a fitment. I want to fit my plastic parts. And make sure they fit correctly. Okay. Quick fitment. Looks pretty good. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my throttle wires. The throttle wire will go to the green, orange, and black, and pink and red. Be aware when you when you plug them in. Sometimes those tab get those tabs inside get bent. So be careful that the plug slides in nice and easy, and you do not bend those tabs. If the connector is hard going in and it's not easy to plug in, uh, it's a good indication that one of those tabs got bent. At this point, it is your choice to put a little silicone on these wire ends here. That gives it a little bit of waterproofing. It's nice to have a little bit of waterproofing when you go smashing through the puddles. As I mentioned before, this wire is not going to be as long, but it will be a little bit long, and you simply just want to tuck this wire up into the tube. Set the controller in there like such. Now we have some other wires on the controller that we want to talk about. Now let's, let's pull it out and talk about those. On the R controller, this particular set of plugs is a 2436. So unplugged, it is 24. Connect yellow, green, black for 36. 
So connect yellow green to black for 36 if you have a 36 volt battery. It does not make it faster or slower. It just tells the controller when to cut off. The white and black wire is 50% power on the R controller. 50% mode. If your child is proficient and never going to switch bikes and he's the only one riding the bike, um, you can leave it unplugged or you simply can just cut it right off. If you're never going to put it in 50% mode, okay, get rid of it. Do not do that until you have ridden the bike and made sure that your child can handle the speed. So, a recap real quick. Yellow. Green is R controllers 2436. Black and white is the 50%. The white connector is the mode switch. So I've done a fitment already and I know my controller is going to fit in here properly. I'm now going to connect my motor cable. On the motor cable it has an arrow on this side and there's another arrow on that side. Align the arrows up and push in. On cold winter days this is pretty difficult to stick in there. Make sure, make sure that it goes down to that line. There's a little line on there. Oh, focus on me here. There you go. There's a little line right there. The end of this goes to that line. If it does not and you're pushing and you're pushing, pushing crazy, <laughs> unplug it and make sure you didn't bend a pin. And number two, you can, again, use a lighter and just warm this up a little bit uh, and push it together. Or or just put a little uh, grease on here, Vaseline, something, and boom, just connects really quick. Dialect or grease, whatever you got handy. Okay, align my arrows and installed. Now, on this first batch of gear drive motors, this wire is long. It's long because this fits other bikes. So don't worry about the length of it for right now. Just uh, ignore the length. We'll deal with that later on. You want to fold the motor connector underneath the controller just like such. So it's going to sit in there like this. Tuck your throttle wires inside. We don't need 2436 because we're in 24 so we don't need to connect that. I want 50% power or excuse me I want 100% power. I don't need to deal with that so I'm stick that in the frame too. If, if you have if you're not sure about the 50% then by all means you can leave it outside the frame which I'm going to leave these two wires outside right now because I'm not sure how quick this thing is and I don't know if my child can handle it or not so I'm just gonna leave them laying out here like that easily accessible so I can deal with them you're going to plug in your battery wire when you plug in your battery wire you might hear a little bit of sparking that's okay nothing to be afraid of Take your battery wire, shove it in that tube, don't be shy, get it in there. Make sure it's not pinching when you put the uh, outside cover on here. And there is controller installation. Make sure this wire goes to the inside underneath like that. Be aware that this is not on top like that. It's got to be down in there. So this back part can 
wiggle a little bit. If you put this right here, there is no room for the plastic piece to go in. So make sure this connector goes up in there like that. Now you got some wiggle room. I'm going to take my plastic piece on the other side. I'm going to do a fitment again. Yeah, trying to do this with one hand. Give me a second. Okay, fitment looks good. Got everything in. Again, I'm going to leave my wires sticking out there like that. And you can even go to this corner. That's a better place. Yeah, let's just do that. Put them to the corner right there. Be aware that there's a screw hole right there and you don't want to pinch. You don't want to pinch that wire on top of that screw hole. So make sure the wires get in there away from that hole. Now we're going to stick the charging port on. There are several places that you can put the charging port. Um, on the other side in between the controller here is a hole. We have experimented with a charging port hole right here. It worked out okay. This is also a mode switch hole which we put next to it. You can, if you want to, put the mode switch and have the mode switch readily accessible because you're switching uh, between different kids with different skill levels. Um, by all means, you know, if you want it pretty, go for it. If you just want to have it quick and accessible, then just, you know, stick it, stick it out here. here let's pull it here. Let's pull the mode switch. Let's pull the mode switch and the speed switch. Let's say I have, a, you know, three kids and they all ride the bike and they're all three different skill levels. So I want to have this accessible, but I, would, I don't want to drill my... I don't want to drill my uh, my uh, cover because it's a pain in the neck. Okay, there you go. So you're done. Now you got mode switch accessible and 50% power. I would recommend doing this in the very beginning on all bikes, no matter the skill level. When you're putting the gear drive 250 watt especially 36 volt battery this thing has monster torque and it's stupid fast with 36 so do that once your child is proficient and and you're you're okay with his uh uh rocketing around then you can stuff this inside cut them off eliminate them do whatever you want okay so, if you want it nice and pretty, go stick it over there. But we were talking about the charge port, so let's go back to the charge port. The charge port position, we kind of want that stuck in there somewhere. You can drill a hole inside in this area about right here. Or... You can come over here and drill a hole in this area and put the charging port right here. Or you can put it in the center. What happens when you put it in the center is this brake cable gets in the way unless you put it right here. And the way you would put the charging port right here is you would put this cover on this side. Let's get these out of the way. You're going to put the cover on this side. This is if you have a drill and you really want to make it look pretty. And I'm going to come over from this side. And I'm going to drill a pilot hole in the area of that. Uh, let me move the wires out of the way. Okay, so I got a little area and hole in there. I'm going to take a drill bit. I'm going to take a drill bit from this side. And I'm going to drill a small pilot hole in the center. Okay, so I'm opting to put my 
speed switch and my 50% power on the outside because I have three different kids riding the bike or I'm not sure if my child has the ability to deal with the uh, power of the gear drive motor so I need to double check first that he has that ability so I can switch it quickly without taking the cover off so that's where you want to tuck it now that we've got everything installed we always want to double check and make sure before you put all your covers on that you have power and it's working so we're here I have no power so what may have happened is a wire came loose yeah sure enough look at that okay so that's the power switch right there and the power switch came off so I gotta fish that wire out of there it popped off that's the green and yellow right there and that wire came off Oops. And that wire came off, so fish that wire out. And do always double check before you put the panels back on and go through the pain of doing all that. Make sure your bike turns on and off. Okay, bike turned on. Slowly rotate, see if it moves. my goodness okay <laughs> it works <laughs> all right so now you can put it together okay so I tucked the wires back down in there again I do have power at this point I'm going to turn it off so I don't bump the throttle and my bike takes off everything is working properly and now I can put the panels on Okay, so I just tried to put my wire in in this position and it rubs on the controller. So I had to come closer to the screw tower and, and take a bite out of that. Now my charge port wire will be on the end here. Okay, the reason we gave you the longer screws is sometimes the panels don't go together like super tight. You know, you got a little gap right there. Let me see the gap. Let me focus the camera here. There you go. See the gap? So, a longer screw is going to allow me to get in there, pull that panel together. I don't want to really snug it down all the way, but I do want to kind of close the gap a little bit. And that longer screw allows me to do that. Okay, I don't really have to go crazy. I just got to go enough to keep that uh, panel from rattling around. Put one screw in here. You can use the smaller screws. You can you can see that here it just doesn't want to go up. You might be pinching a wire, so double check that you're not pinching a wire. Oh, there's a little hole right here. I could have put the uh, yeah, I could have put the charging port in that little hole. Didn't see that. Nice, okay. I'm going to switch that. I'm going to try to come out this hole with the charging port. Yeah, that's slick. That worked out good. I don't know if that's on the other bikes, but... Ha <laughs> ha! Nice. If you don't want to drill a hole, there you go. Charging port. Obviously, if you want it all nice and pretty. You need to drill a hole in there or put the hole right here. You can put the hole right here at the uh, seat area. It will also fit there. That's totally doable. Now remember this hole was the uh, was one screw but we tore the tower off. Um, I put a long screw here, here and here. I put one on the bottom and on the top right here. You know it's not going together really tight. But that's probably because I got my wires out here and I don't want to really super pinch them. So I just put my bottom screw in there and 
it works just fine. So leave it alone. No big deal. If you really want to put that screw in, you really want to get it nice and close, you're going to have to put these wires some, some place where they can fit or you'll have to notch out the plastic a little bit more so they fit flush. But there is the Stasa conversion kit. Now you have some extra wire right here. You're going to zip tie one out of the way. Zip ties came in the kit. Okay, zip tie goes on like such. Flip the end to make it pretty, just rotate it down. And that zip tie is to keep the wire from rubbing on the hub motor. We have some excess wire here. You're just going to loop like such and use another zip tie. Get another zip tie in there. Be right back. Put the phone down. Okay. Make it pretty. Rotate it around. Not easy. Forget it. Okay, make sure you're not rubbing. Here would be an example of the 16 installation. This is not a Stasis frame, but it's very close. This is the outside bracket installation. The wire comes to the inside. You'll put some zip ties on it. This is a sample of the inside bracket on the 16 inch. Hundred sixty millimeter disc. You will use no washer on the inside. This bracket you have to request from your dealer. Tell them you want inside. Again, you will have to spread the frame a little bit more, just two or three millimeters more to 125 millimeters. All of our brackets can accept the oil-filled brake caliper. These calipers can be purchased on Amazon, eBay, and or ask your uh, dealer.